Now I'm going to try to use a softer voice so I don't kill the people on the recording. So when we're ready to add and subtract radicals, the rule for adding and subtracting radicals is the same as the rule was for adding and subtracting fractions and adding and subtracting variables. You must have like terms. And your term that we're talking about means that you have to have the same number under the radical. That's how you know you have like terms, is if you have the same number under the radical. And so you start looking, oh gee, at number four. And problem number four says the square root of five plus the square root of five. Well, how many square roots are we talking about here? Well, this is one square root of five. How many square roots are we talking about here? One square root of five. So one root five plus one root five equals two root fives. And that's literally how you add it. You just add up that coefficient in front of your radical. That's the final answer. You would not ever say that out loud, would you? No, no. Shh. And so for number two, go back above it. You've got four root sevens minus, oh, now you got to know how to do integers. Four root sevens minus five root sevens is how many root sevens? Seven. Negative one. one. Yeah, the four minus the five is going to give you negative one root sevens. But if you want to be lazy, you can make that the invisible one and just put negative root 7 if you want. I don't care which way you write it. If you want to put the 1 so you don't screw up as much as I do, great. If you like leaving it invisible, go for it. Okay, whatever floats your boat. Okay. And you're like, great, I can do this. Go to number 7. Because I said so. Then so you've got negative 10 root 11s minus 11 root 11s, and now you have to know how to do your negatives. Negative it's how many? 21. <laughs> negative. Negative 21 what? Uh, 11. Not 11s. Root 11s. Root 11s. You have to say either radical or square root or root. root. You can't just say 21 11. You have to say negative 21 square root 11 or something along those lines. Okay. So you're like, okay, yeah, I can do this. This is just dogs being added to dogs all over again. That's, that's not so bad. And so then we come up here and go, oh, okay, what if we throw in something like number one? Now we've got fish and turtles. And you can't add these because they are not like terms. But what should you always check before you give up? See if they have something in common. So what you're going to do is simplify your radicals to look for like terms. Just in case you've got something hiding out that really is the same radical, but it's just not simplified. So you go down here and you go, okay, is this radical 3 as simple as it gets? Let's see, 3 is 3 times 1. Yep, that's as simple as it gets. So you've got 5 root 3. What about this 12? That's a 4 and a 3. Oh, so the 4 is a perfect square. What comes out? A 2. But notice how there was a minus between these radicals, so I'm going to put a minus in front of that. And then what's left to be under the radical here? Tree. Boring old little three. So that root 12 was really just two root threes in disguise. But now that you've discovered its true self, what is five root threes minus two root threes? Three. And it's just three root, three root threes. That's it. I can finish this. But you're not going to, we're not going to make you do all of them. I'm only going to make you do some of them. So try number three. We'll keep the numbers tiny for now. Try number three. Nice small numbers. Okay. 
Is your brain melting yet? No. And so they are not currently like terms. So what do you always check? Common yeah, instead of common denominators, you're going to simplify to see if you can give them a common radical. Does root 2 simplify? No. It does not. Does root 6 simplify? Yeah. Well, 6 is, if you, if you don't know, check. 6 is a 2 times 3. Any perfect squares in there? No. So nothing here simplified. So guess what your answer is? No, it's just the question is the answer. It's 2 root 2 plus 2 root 6. Whatever that is, is your answer. That's, that's a, you cannot combine it anymore or simplify it anymore. I know. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Okay? And so you, sometimes that's going to happen. When that happens, as long as you've checked to make sure that both radicals are completely simplified and done correctly, then you're probably in good shape. Now check number five. And you already see that they don't have like terms. So my guess is, is you're probably starting to simplify you some radicals here. Hopefully you're looking for things with perfect squares so you don't have to do as much work. Yeah. So for 50, I'm going to break that into 25 times 2. And so I go, okay, there was already a 5 outside. But now when I root this 25, another 5 is going to go outside. And this 2 is going to get left behind in the radical. And then it's got a minus, and it's got a 2. And now I need to simplify the 18. And so the 18 is what, 9 times 2? Yeah. And the square root of 9 is 3. So now I need to bring that 3 outside the radical and the root 2 gets left behind. Ta-da! Everything's all simplified. Am I done? No. Oh, no, I'm not. I have to keep going. So this will be 25 root 2 minus 6 root 2. And what is 25 dogs minus 6 dogs? 19. 19 dogs, so 25 roots minus, no, I didn't do anything to them, they just went in the other room. They had to pee. Okay. And so this is the kind of thing you're going to be doing at the beginning of your homework today, is you're going to be adding and subtracting stuff. And you might just survive it as long as you're just careful not to mess up simplifying. So, ooh, Let's make it extra hard. Let's try three radicals in the same problem. So problem six here. This is a deadly weapon. So you come to number six here. A is 4 times 2, so this 2 outside gets this 2 outside as a friend, and this 2 stays inside. This guy's just going to be 2 root 2. And then this one's got a plus 2, but then I've got to simplify the root 50. So 25 and 2, y'all are just following along and checking as you go. So the root of 25 is 5, and then you've got a root 2 there. So you end up with 4 root 2 plus 2 root 2 plus 10 root 2 equals 16 root 2. Did y'all find that? Yes. yes. Yeah. E? Yeah. Yay! That's the kind of stuff you're going to be doing. Seriously. Not bad. The only, the only thing worse about it is when you get just like, you know, bigger numbers to simplify and you're more likely to make a mistake with a bigger number. But it's the same basic principles. So, for one last hurrah before we move on, please do number 12. Everybody's going to play along and do it, but I'm not going to do it while you're working on it so that you have to think on your own or talk to the people around you instead of relying on me. Finish. 
How dare you? But is it correct? I don't know. Hopefully. Three. Yes, indeed. The I is correct. Times tables are indeed your friends. And memorizing your perfect squares is also very helpful. Oh, yeah. My friend. Y'all have been studying those, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pulled up that quizlet and started flashing through those flashcards? Yeah. Indeed. Okay. So you guys now follow, see if you get the same thing as me. I thought that 3 root 3 didn't simplify. Correct. And so then for the root 27, that's 3 times 9. 9 is a perfect square, so its square root, the 3 comes out. This 3 got left behind in the radical, and 3 dogs minus 3 dogs made none. And you got 0. I don't think that's right. Yeah, zero. Yes? So you wouldn't do 0 in the root 3. Well, you could you do 0 root 3s? Indeed. Yes, but what is 0 times anything? Zero. It's 0. Well, I guess I'll take it down. I got that right. Oh no, people are getting it right. That means they can do stuff and things. So, uh -huh. with the math gods decree, we must now learn how to take that and distribute. <coughs> nice. Let's go. <laughs> So do you guys remember how to distribute from back in the dark ages? Yeah. Indeed. What was your distributive property from your implied statement sheet? You multiply this thing. No, if you had to write your distributive property in an implied statement quiz right now, what would you put? I couldn't be able to do it. A times B plus C equals A B plus A C. So you, have, you can multiply the first thing, and then multiply the second thing, and leave the plus in the middle. That's your distributive property. You've known it for a while. You love it. It's great. Solves lots of things for you. And you know how to multiply radicals. When you multiply radicals, you multiply the stuff outside together, and then the stuff that's under the radical gets multiplied together. So when you see something like this, you get to just do all these wonderful things in one problem. So what's 2 times the square root of 3? 2 square roots of 3. What is 2 times 4 square roots of 5? 8 square Yeah, the stuff outside the radical gets multiplied. And there's nothing under a radical here, so the square root of 5 is going to be unchanged. What goes in between them? Plus. And that plus sign that was already there. And then you ask yourself, can this be combined? No. no. Can any of them be simplified to get a like term? No. No, because 5 is prime, so it's not going to simplify. 3 is prime. So guess what, y'all? That's your answer. That's, that's just rough. Yeah, it is. Never fear. I will give you one that's more meaty so that you don't get bored doing the baby stuff. So now you've got to do root 6 times, parentheses, root 3 minus 2 root 6s. And so you start to multiply. Remember, you've got to distribute to both things. And so what is root 6 times root 3? Root 18. Yeah, just keep it simple. It's root 18. And then there's a minus sign. And what's root 6 times 2 root 6s? Minus 2. Well, so you think about your outside numbers. I've got a 1 times a 2, which is just a 2. And then underneath the radical, I've got a 6 times a 6, which is 36. Don't try and get ahead of yourself and predict what it's going to be. Just put the stuff down. So now you can simplify these. What's root 18? That's the root of 9 times the root of 2. So the root of 9 is going to be 3, and then that 2 stays behind. And then you get to this next guy. Look at it. What do you notice about the 36? It's a perfect square. What is the square root of 36? So I've just got a negative 2 times a 6 
which is minus 12. Are these like terms? In the well, I mean. No. 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 Oh, yeah. Because this 12 is really not kind of having a 12 root 1, because the root of 1 is just 1. But you're too lazy to write that radical, and so you just write the 12. But in any case, they do not have the same radical there, and so those cannot be combined. And that is your most simplified answer, is the 3 square roots of 2 minus 12. Okay. Scared yet? Nope. Confused yet? Wait, why are you not scared? I will be soon, though. You will be? Okay. Try number 15. I'll give you 30 seconds. <coughs> it's a distributed property problem. You've got to distribute. I got it. I think. Oh, I have one. Then I can't think of the line. Then I can't think of the line. Okay, and so you say, all right, what's root 3 times the number 5? Five? Five yeah, you're going to write it as 5 root 3. Now, you're going to be tempted. A lot of people are like, why can't I write it this way with the number after? And part of the reason is, is we decided to put the coefficient in front, just like you don't do x5, you do 5x. But the other reason is, is because if you accidentally make that bar too long, it's going to look like the 5 is under the radical, and you don't want to make that mistake. So always just put the coefficient in front instead of behind the radical. And what's root 3 times root 3? No, it's not 9. It's root 9, which, oh, the square root of 9 happens to be 3. So you probably got 5 root 3 plus 3. Did anybody get 3 plus 5 root 3? I got 8. Well, how did you get 8? I didn't put the 5 root 3. So you just, you just put the 5 and then you did 5 plus 3? Basically what he's saying is he did it. Yeah. But notice, guys, you can write these in either order. Addition is commutative. And so you can do cats plus dogs, or you can do dogs plus cats. And that's the same thing. One last one of these, and then we get to get to the good stuff. So one last one. Distribute. I never foil. What did you call it? I forgot what it carries. I'm tempted. I don't think I want to. Actually, I will. Well, don't try and get to number 17 yet. We're still at number 16. I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 you're not having fun, are you? No, we finished. Yeah, but you're in math class. You're supposed to be suffering. Oh, no. Oh, no. You poor things. But I love math. It makes people cry. See? I love math. That makes people cry. Okay. So let's see. I will give candy to someone who can walk me through the entire process of solving this one. Elliot thinks he's got it, so can we be quiet so we can hear what he has to say? Uh-huh. And it goes to negative 6. Where does the negative 6 come from? Negative 3 times 2. Okay. And then... After the negative 6, you put a square root 3. Uh-huh. And then you do minus 3, and then square root 18. Okay, because you did the 3 times the 6 and got 18. I can buy that. And then you distribute the 18 into the 6 and 3. No. And two. There's no distributing here now. What? Distri you no, mean no, factoring? Factoring. Factoring, okay. You were just on a distributive streak, so, you know. So we factor this. What do you get again? 6 and 3. Uh huh. Can you put the three into the inside the square root? Well, yeah. The, these are under the square root. Yeah. 
You put the you put the six on the outside. The six is not a perfect square. Six is not a perfect square. Here's a no. Six is not a perfect square. That's two times three. That's not a perfect square. But now that I have factored the six, do you see anything in here that could be a perfect square? Two. Nope, two's not a perfect square. But see how I have a pair of primes? A pair is a square. So what is three times three? Oh, what is the square root of that nine? Three. So that three can come hang outside with that three. And then this two left behind is going to stay under the radical, so I'm going to have a minus nine and then the square root of two for this guy. Oh, wait, I got that. And out this negative six root three was already simplified. Oh, are these like terms? Yes. I heard yes and I heard no. That was not very helpful. Yes. No. Oh, what, they are like terms? No. No. no, they're not. And so you're just going to have negative 6 root 3 minus 9 root 2 as your answer, and that's the most simplified form you can get. Oh, my gosh. Okay. okay. Um, you get candy for being willing to do that in front of everybody. We well, said we were doing right. Yeah, but he was still brave enough to be willing to do that in front of the class, and so I think that's worthy. Okay. So if I did it wrong. And now, finally, the boss level of today's lesson we're going to multiply a binomial times a binomial. Oh, well, y'all did these back last year in algebra where you do something like x minus 1 times x plus 3 and you have to multiply that out. Only now, instead of x's, we're going to have radicals. Oh, no, 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 no. Shh. Because y'all are already good at this. And so the way, the way we're going to multiply this, guys, is basically by doing distribution twice. I've got to multiply the first guy over here by both things over on the right. And then I've got to multiply the second guy by both things on the right. And so sometimes that's called like double distribution. And sometimes it's called FOIL. Did anybody ever hear about foiling last year in algebra? Do you remember what the letters stand for? What do you think? Uh, first, inner, last. Uh-huh, very good. You can get some candy for that one. That's good memory. Okay. All these are is just ways to help you remember to not leave anything out. Okay? Because I don't, I don't remember it by doing FOIL. I just remember by following the arrows. I take this first guy, the 2 root 5, and I multiply it times the root 10. What is 2 root 5 times root 10? 2 root 50. And now I'm going to take this 2 root 5 and multiply it by the other thing over here. So what's 2 root 5 times root 6? And it will be 2 on the outside and root 30 on the inside. Because the stuff outside gets multiplied and the stuff inside gets multiplied just like we learned yesterday. Now we're going to go to these second ones now. So I'm going to do the negative 2 root 3 times the root 10. Or well, what's the negative 2 times the 1 going to be? The negative 2. And then the root 3 times the root 10 is root 30. And now I'm going to take that negative 2 root 3 and multiply it by the root 6, which will be negative 2 root what? 18. 18. Okay. Now that you've got it all down, then you can start to simplify stuff. You, if you try and do everything all at once, you go crazy. So you look first and see, is there anything with, with like terms already? Oh, look, this has a root 30, and this has a root 30. So let's go ahead and combine those like terms. What's 2 root 30 minus 2 root 30? Zero. Zero. Okay, so they're gone. 
we appreciate that when that happens. But now I've still got the root 50 and the root 18 guy that I need to just check to see if they could be like terms. And so you're going to need to simplify those guys. So when you come here to simplify the root 50, you've got the 2 outside. Now what's this 50 going to break up into? 25 and 2. And of course, 25 is a perfect square. What's its square root? Five. That 5 is going to come out with the 2 that was already out there. And then this individual 2 is going to get left behind underneath. Then you look at this to negative 2 root 18. I've got a negative 2 outside. And then what does the 18 break into? 9, two. nine times 2. And the 9, of course, is a perfect square, and the square root of 9 is 3. So it comes outside to hang out with the negative 2 that was already there. And then I'm going to leave behind that single 2 underneath. Oh, it turns out these are like terms. This is a 10 root 2 minus a 6 root 2. And what's 10 dogs minus 6 dogs? Four dogs. Four dogs. Four dogs. In this case, our dogs are square root 2. dogs go? They better be safe. They're barking. <laughs> They're in their little dog houses. See? They look cute. Okay? Questions? Problems? Complaints? Concerns? Comments? Okay. We are, we're only going to do a couple more, and then I'm going to turn you loose to do it on your homework. Try not to die. Don't let him die. Don't, don't, don't die. Okay. okay. Which one shall we do next? You, you guys pick out of all of these. 19. 19? That's a good one. I like 19. Yes. No, that's a 20. That's okay. 20. What? Wait, never mind. 20. I think we need 20. So, do, would you like to tell us how to do it if it's so E word? Get up there, bud. I'm going to take that as a no. Okay. Now, here's the biggest new mistake everybody makes the first time they see this. They think they can just square the 3 and square the 6 and add them. No, no, you can't do that. And you can't do that because... Two different brackets. Yeah, yeah, because the number in front can distribute across a plus sign. Exponents never distribute. So you're going to have to take this and know that this means 3 plus root 6. I know how to say what I'm thinking. And 3 plus root 6. And some of you will recognize this as a perfect square binomial, and you will know the shortcut to get the answer. But if you don't know the shortcut to get the answer, you just multiply it out by using your double distribution or your FOIL method to get it. And so you go, okay, what's the 3 times the 3 going to give you? That one was rough. What's 3 times the square root of 6? 3, three times the square root of 6. Who knew? And then what is this th square root of 6 times 3 going to be? Three root six. That's just another 3 root 6. And, root and what's root 6 times root 6? Root 36. Yes. Okay. And so now you've got it here. And then, of course, what things do you have to do? Combine like terms and... Simplify stuff. This one's simplified. Root 6 is also simplified. Is root 36 simplified? No, no. indeed. It is, it is not. But it's a perfect square. What is the square root of 36? Six. So it's just six. a plain old 6. So I'm just going to do that right there. Make my life simpler. So then you go, okay, what are a couple things that could be considered like terms in here? Nine is oh, a 9 plus a 6 is how much? 15. 15. And if I have three root sixes plus three more root sixes, how many root sixes do I have? Six, six, do I have six twelves? Six. six root sixes. No, I just have six root six. Could I have written it as six root six plus fifteen? Yeah, indeed. Indeed. And that's fine as well, because you can add in either order. But no extend order. And just be careful that you don't make your radical too long. Okay? One more? Uh, nah. Uh, mm, I think you want to see one more. All right. Uh, which one do you recommend? 
Well, I recommend either 22 or 23. 24. 22. 22 is a fun one. 24 looks hard. Those are, some people will recognize this from algebra as looking like x minus y times x plus y. Which was a very special set of binomials to multiply. But if you don't recognize it, multiply it out and see what happens. Go ahead. Right, right. I already made my guess. Okay, now figure out the answer and see if it matches your guess. Okay. First write your guess down somewhere else so that you can't pretend you had it right. Like on the back. Oh, true. Alright, I got it. Uh, in paper? I don't care. It's your paper. I got mean, it So write down your guess and then check your answer. I just guessed. Well, that's what a guess is. So let's see. You're going to have to take this root 5 and multiply it by both of those things. So root 5 times root 5 is root 25. And root 5 times root 3 is root 15. And then I'm going to have to take this negative root 3 and multiply it by the root 5. And that's going to be negative root 15. And then the negative root 3 times the positive root 3 will be a negative root 9. Did y'all get what I got? Yeah. And then, oh look, do I have any like terms I can combine? Yeah. Yeah, right here. What's root 15 minus root 15? Yeah. Nothing. They cancel out. What's the square root of 25? Yeah, 5. What's the square root of 9? 3. So it'll be minus 3, and 5 minus 3 is? 2. 2. <gasps> All this ugly junk is really just the number 2. That's crazy. Yeah. We get to do that, mind you. And so did you notice the pattern? Y'all learned last year that when you have the same thing multiplied, but one has a minus and one is a plus, it's really just x squared minus y squared. But the two is up there means what? And so if I square, so if I square this first guy, what's the square of root five? No, what's the square of root five? A plain five. And what's the square of root three? A plain three. A plain three. And then there's a minus in between them. And so it came out to be two. That's so funny. <laughs> this is a pattern. This was called a difference of, two, of squares that you learned about when you were doing binomials last year. It's just a fun thing you can do. Okay. So the remainder of your time, you've got about, what, the 20-ish minutes, a little more than 20 minutes, that you can work on your homework and ask questions and check the answers at my table. Yeah, I ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that, Sean.